Now, Moldova's pro-Western president has outlined what she described as a plot by Moscow to take over the country. Moldova's foreign minister is expected in Brussels today for urgent consultations with the European Union. Russia has denied the claims. The tiny Eastern European country shares a long border with Ukraine and has a breakaway region, Transnistria, that is controlled by Russian-backed separatists. On Sunday, thousands of anti-government demonstrators took to the streets of Chisano, and Moldova's government said the protests were orchestrated by pro-Russian forces. We're joined now live by DW correspondent Rosie Burchard in Brussels, where the Moldovan foreign minister will be attending a summit of his EU counterparts. Rosie, why is Moldova important for the EU in this context? Anthony, ministers are getting ready to start trickling in to talks here in Brussels and indeed Moldova's foreign minister will be joining European Union counterparts. And really, this is all about this country's geography and its history and its politics. First of all, its geography. This is a country which shares a border with Ukraine and that means it's taken in a lot of Ukrainian refugees since this full-scale invasion began a year ago. But beyond this, this is also one of the poorest countries in Europe and amid this cost of living crisis which is being experienced in so many parts of the world there's been plenty of political instability within Moldova domestically and then beyond that politically also Moldova is constitutionally neutral that means that it is not and cannot be part of a military alliance like NATO now all those things converge to mean that European Union countries see Moldova as a place which could be vulnerable if Russia were to set its sights beyond Ukraine. So what can the EU do? What, what can EU countries do to help stabilise the situation in the country? Well, Moldova's uh, president has said that she thinks her country is, be, is bearing witness to a hybrid war being waged by Russia against it. Now, that is something which Moscow denies. But uh, Moldova will be coming to this European Union uh, foreign minister's meeting with a sort of a wish list. Now, the European Union has already provided Moldova with humanitarian assistance to support with the uh, reception of refugees. It's also provided or is in the course of providing about 150 million, million euros worth of a macro financial assistance that's essentially loans and grants to help with liquidity needs for the economy. Now there is something more which Moldova would like at the top of its wish list really and that is like Ukraine to become part of this European Union to not only be a guest at a meeting like this but to have a permanent seat at the table. Moldova is officially a candidate country like Ukraine for European Union membership but joining the bloc can take years or sometimes even more than a decade so that's something that they will likely not get any movement on today. However, European Union countries are considering more concrete support and some of that includes, for example, a civilian mission within Moldova led by the EU to try and improve what they call cyber resilience within, that, uh, within the context of Moldova's president saying she is bearing witness to hybrid war but waged by Russia, something, as I said, Moscow strongly denies. Yeah, Russia remains a key topic at the summit with a tenth package of sanctions being discussed. Is support within the EU still unanimous on, on this issue? Well... Russia has been top of the agenda at all of these meetings for the past year, of course, as the European Union strives to keep offering support for Ukraine. And currently on Minister's agenda is a tenth package of sanctions against Moscow. Now, this is seen by diplomats I've spoken to as really the biggest package of sanctions against Russia since last year, last summer, when we saw the European Union impose a partial oil embargo on Moscow. Now, the European Union has already uh, sanctioned imports of, as I mentioned, Russia. Russian oil, also imports of Russian coal. Now, within this latest package, what I'm hearing, and of course this is being discussed behind closed doors, is that it should be a, around 10 billion euros worth of export bans, so bans on export to Russia of key equipment that could be used for military purposes. And beyond that, they're also likely to sanction what they call Russian propagandists. Now, uh, that this will be top of the agenda today, not yet over the line yet, I'm hearing, but there is pressure to get it finished by the 24th of February. The the key, that key date, the fateful day one year ago when the, of the full-scale invasion. Rosie Burchett in Brussels, thank you.